Hey everybody, this is Rhino, and we are at the Hearthstone new expansion. It's almost upon us. The, Rise of, the Hearthstone Rise of the Shadow new expansion is now almost here. So to see it, we go into crafting mode, select Rise of the Shadows, and then click Include Uncraftable Cards, and then we can look at all the cards. In the last recording, I looked at all the Druid cards, so now it's time to look at all the Hunter cards. Uh, we're looking at them to try and figure out how useful they might be in future decks when the expansion comes out. They never really give you a firm date on when anything comes out, but I imagine it's next Tuesday, next Thursday, uh, the Tuesday or Thursday after that. They said it was going to be it's mid-April, so it couldn't be much later after that point. So the first card we have is a one mana spell card called rapid fire it's a common card it's a twin spell so and it deals one damage uh, this is only slightly more advantageous than other cards we've had that have that would do two damage for uh one mana it, that's what effectively it's doing actually it's worse than that because it would be two damage for two mana but you get the option to play it on different minions um, I don't know if this is really going to be too helpful except for if you're playing something with Maligos which is a legendary minion that gives you spell damage plus five if you can get Maligos on the field then for one mana this would do six damage and then you for another mana you could do another six damage which would be very very helpful uh, although how well, how or why you'd be playing Maligos as a hunter would be very questionable. But maybe there is a Maligos hunter deck that could be developed here. Next we have a one mana, one attack, one health beast type minion called Shimmerfly. Uh, it has a death rattle. At, add a random hunter spell to your hand. Uh, Death Rattles activate when the minion dies. Uh, it is rare, which really doesn't mean anything different. Rare and epic cards and common cards are all the same. You can have two copies of any of those cards in, in your deck. It's not until you get to legendary cards that you can only have one copy. Um, and I doubt Hearthstone would ever change that where you could have, say, three commons in a in the deck it, it, there's really no reason that, that they would do that um adding a random hunter spell to your deck doesn't seem like it would make a lot of sense to me because there's already a spell hunter deck that works pretty well where you don't have any minions in your your deck at all you just play spells and the spells summon minions uh, so if you were to add a minion to your deck to get a spell that seems kind of crazy this might be useful for new players but i don't think it's going to be a top tier meta deck card next we have a three mana epic spell uh, i guess the slight difference between the cards are commons rares and epics cost different dust to craft but that's that's the difference legendaries all cost the most so the spell is nine lives. Uh, discover a friendly death rattle minion that died this game. Also trigger its death rattle. Um, this might work depending on what death rattle minion you're playing. Again, there is something to a Maligos deck here because I've been playing a Maligos deck and trying to figure out how to play it recently. There is a death rattle minion that you could probably play as a hunter that would get a 1-1 one, one copy of Maligos uh, on your field. So if that happened and then you played this so it happened again, that would just increase the spell damage by another plus 5, which would potentially have this 1 mana spell doing 11 uh, damage. Or any other combination of things. There's some wild cards like Fugan and Stalag that you could certainly 
play this card with and, and get a Thaddeus, which is an 11 attack and an 11 health minion, uh, but you'd only be able to do that in wild. Next, you have a 3 mana, 3 attack, 3 health mech type minion called Ursatron. Uh, mech types are weird because they were introduced in an expansion that I'm fairly certain is wild now. Like, uh, yeah, uh, it was like the grand tournament that mechs were first in introduced, or goblins versus gnome that they were first in introduced. And so that's like a long, long time ago. And then they get kind of forgotten. They're, they were forgotten for almost a year, it felt like. Now we get one or two every now and then. Uh, but I'm still not sure if there's enough out there to make a mech deck. They did introduce a new key phrase for a magnetic that would allow uh, a card to magnetize itself to mechs and improve its health and attack. So maybe they are pushing forward to make mech types a permanent factor in games going forward. Uh, it's death rattles to draw a mech from your deck. Uh, so you play this card, let's say it dies, it gives you a mech. You play this card, so it, it, uh, it discovers that and puts it back in your hand and activates its death rattle. And then you would have, at that point, at least three, I think four, yeah, mechs in your hand at one time. Why is that important? Because there is a legendary minion out there that if it's on the field with two other mechs, then basically transforms itself into Voltron. I've only ever even seen it happen two or three times in gameplay because it's so hard to do and uh, gives you a pretty powerful machine mech type uh, top tier minion. So there might be something here to that uh, or there might be some just uh, synergistic lower level early play and mid game play that, that would work with that kind of depends on what we see in the neutral decks uh, for the new expansion, the neutral cards. If we see a lot of mechs, obviously that would be more likely to be successful. If we see just a, an average amount of mechs, then it'll be less likely to be a successful uh, top tier meta deck to build. Next we have a 4 mana, 3 attack, 3 health minion called Arcane Fletcher. Whenever you play a 1 cost minion, draw a spell from your deck. Uh, this again is a card that seems almost designed to not work with Spell Hunter, and there might be a great reason for that. A lot of people have been playing Spell Hunter. Um, inherently, the problem with Hearthstone more than anything is that it's way too easy for people to play the top tier meta decks, even if they don't know what they are. There's too many websites to tell you just use this card, use this card, use this card. You don't even really have to understand what they do to, to get started. And so nobody is really out there playing decks that they want to play anymore if they're succeeding. Uh, you could play any deck you want to play, but then you're just going to lose and, and stay at rank 20. If you want to get anywhere higher, you have to do what everybody else is doing and it, it becomes very repetitive and very boring i would almost wish for the next collectible card game to come out that's successful for there to be just a rpg element to it where specific players have specific cards and only that player has that specific card uh, so that only i would have an arcane fledger with three attack and three health and everybody else would have something that did something slightly different. Even if it was just randomized by name and artwork, that would uh, make it so much more difficult for people to make these top tier meta decks. Uh, so yeah, there, there's definitely more metrics I think need to be put into the next collectible card game. Uh, so it's more random and less strategized or strategizable. Uh, yeah, 
I don't have much else to say about that one. Next we have a 4 mana spell called the Mark Shot. Deal 4 damage to a minion, discover a spell. This will work perfectly fine in the Spell Hunter deck. It probably is better than at least one of those spell cards that is it right now in the Spell Hunter deck. Hunter spell deck. Um, so, yeah. We'll see that played. Let's see. Next we have a 5 mana spell called Hunting Party. Copy all beasts in your hand. Hmm. Alright. I'm not sure how many cards you can have in your hand. Uh, whether it's 10 or 12. But it's around there. Um, so. On your 5th turn. If you have 5 cards in your hand. And they're all beasts. You could copy them. But. I doubt you would have a zero mana beast in your hand. Like, I, I'm not sure I've even seen a zero mana beast. So you're gonna have at best one 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 mana beasts in your hand. So on your sixth turn, if you played this on the fifth turn, you would have six mana, and you would have at most ten one mana. Uh, beasts so you could play six of those ten and put them on the field which would be six out of the seven minions that could be on the field hmm so I don't think that pure numbers is what you would use this for you would probably use this for s copying specific cards that have specific effects Things like Scavenging Hyena, which is one of the best beasts you can have as a hunter uh, and gets played all the time. Or uh, the one that gives all beasts plus one attack. Or the one that gives all beasts uh, charge. Although, why do you need two copies of a card that gives you gives all beasts charge? You really don't. Um, those really are, I guess, Scavenging Hyena and the beast that I don't remember the name of that gives all minion all beast plus one attack would be about the two best ones you would play this for and that seems pretty expensive at five mana just to get a couple copies of that four scavenging hyenas on the field might be useful but it very well might not so i'm, I'm not sure that that card would be worth playing you, it feels like there's a lot of scenarios where you'd have this in your hand and it would just not make sense at all uh, and there is the Shutterwalk legendary minion that casts all spells that have been cast. I believe that's what Shutterwalk does. So uh, maybe play this to then play Shutterwalk so it copies all the beasts in your hand. But I don't even know why you would do that. So let's just move on. That's a real confusing card as it stands. But maybe there's a reason for it that we'll find later on in the neutral cards or later on down the list here. Next we have a 6 mana, 3 attack, 4 a health uh, mech type minion called the Oblivitron. As a death rattle, summon a mech from your hand and trigger its death rattle. Um, so in theory, I guess maybe you play this it would die and then summon this and trigger its death rattle to draw another mech to your hand and then uh, play this to uh, to discover this card and put it back in your hand and activate its death rattle which would be to summon a mech from your hand uh, and trigger its death rattle which would be actually summoning itself in this case uh, so then this and this would be on the field and it would trigger its death rattle which would be to summon a mech from your hand which at that point you unless you had a third mech in your hand it couldn't do um, so i guess 
you might have a ninth turn combination here if you had two of these in your hand and you played this and then it died somehow um, and then you played this uh, almost certainly what does this could be a seventh turn combination you play this on the sixth turn it dies but somehow on the sixth, your opponent's sixth turn and then on the seventh turn you play this and you have two of these in your hand and that that could do some crazy combination there and that's like a four card combination to summon quite a lot of mechs on the field um, and frankly as long as this one's involved this doesn't have to be involved you could have two other mechs in the, on the um, in your hands and it still would work pretty well still I don't know if if it's quite yet to the point where you could play a mech deck but that is probably the first interesting card combination I've seen for from a Hearthstone expansion in a while last year's three expansions were kind of dull next we have a six mana spell called unleash the beast which I would have sworn that there was a druid card called unleash the beast already uh, but it's a twin spell summon a 5-5 five five wyvern with a rush and so you can play this on the sixth turn and get one five five and then play it on the seventh turn and get a second five five and then finally we have a seven mana five attack six health legendary minion called Farisa Windrunner, Battle Cry, Equip Thordal the Star's Fury. Which unfortunately they've never updated this game in the way I would like it to be, where they would show these special cards on the side. Uh, like there's plenty of white space here. Even if you were playing on cell phones, there'd still be a decent amount of white space here when showing this. So I have no idea what Thordal the Star's Fury is. I assume it's a weapon. If I was to speculate, I would guess with the three arrows that it does some amount of damage and hits the enemy to the left and to the right of whoever you target or something along that line. Um, if this is a seven mana and it's a five, six, it normally would be a 7-7 seven, seven. so I wouldn't be surprised if it is a 1-2 one, uh, one attack two durability weapon or if it were a two attack one durability weapon uh, but it might actually be a lot higher than that too uh, you could almost certainly go on the Hearthstone's website and figure out what this weapon does Th that being said Equipping a weapon to the hunter doesn't really synergize with much else and there's nothing else really to say about this minion um, as it is. It, it's just another legendary for another legendary sake. And that will be a case that we will see in all these expansions. A lot of these legendary cards are just legendary cards because Activision Blizzard says so, not because they're actually good or in some crazy way would break the game if there was more than one copy here. Uh, so in every expansion, we're going to see that there are two legendaries per hero class just because they said so. And there's definitely some power imbalance here to that. So what I want to do before we wrap up this recording is I want to look at the legendary mech card I'm thinking of because that's where this is going to break down uh, right now as far as standard cards you have uh, that card that synergizes with mechs for hunter this one will trigger death rattle so there might be a Maligos uh, trick here uh, this is magnetic, so it will magnetize onto another mech and give it its attack and health and effect 
to another card. So if you magnetized it to this, it would become a 4-3 with poisonous. This one is a magnetic with a death rattle to destroy a random enemy. So you could probably trigger that death rattle a few times and it makes some use of it. This one is a mech that just draws mech. This one has your death rattles tri triggering twice, which synergizes very nicely with this one. Uh, but you can kind of see in standard, you don't even have eight mech cards uh, that are hunter specific. There are a decent number of neutral cards here uh, that are mechs, although you have to be careful. Some of them just have mechanic in the name, so this isn't actually a mech. But I believe the mechanical dragonling actually is, that it is summoned by it. So I'm looking for a legendary I may very well not have. There's quite a few of those still in existence. Let's see, where is it? This is Mechathune, which wins the game immediately if you have no cards in your hand, deck, or battlefield. Uh, so basically, you have to have absolutely nothing. Hmm. I don't see the card here. So I bet it is wild. Let's come over here and look at wild cards then. Not that one, not that one, not that one, not that one, not that one. Where are you hiding, card? Hmm. Here it is, Minmon's Head, wild card from Goblins vs. Gnomes. So, yes, yeah, so if you're playing wild, at the start of your turn, if you have at least three mechs, destroy them all and summon VO7TRON or Voltron. Uh, so, yeah, not really synergy there for standard play when a card like that is not available. And, you can see there's a considerable amount of mech cards here that are not in standard anymore. It's quite a lot. Uh, that being said, I don't think that pushes the hunter count up by much. It gives you exactly like one more mech, and that's it. Uh, let's see which one's the wild one. Hmm. It'd be nice if you could tell which one was in wild. Here it is. Uh, give you a max plus two attack. So, yeah. I'm still very much of the thought that that there's not quite enough to make a mech deck. Alright. Now, there does seem for a spell hunter deck to be a reason to play Maligos. If, and that's a big if, uh, you can summon a 1-1 one, one copy. So I need to know if, let's see, 1-1. One, one. If I type in 1-1, one, one, uh, probably should just type in 1-1 one, one copy, actually. Copy. Let's see. After your opponent plays a minion, summon a 1 1 copy of it. Whenever you draw a minion, summon a 1 1 copy. No, you can't. The card I was thinking of was the Cobalt Illusionist. So if you could get a Cobalt Illusionist, which is a rogue class card, into the hunter class card, then trigger its death rattle, you could get 1 1 copies of Malagos, and then you would have a Malagos deck in Hunter. Uh, but you can't. Not consistently. Or reasonable uh, on the other hand I guess maybe you could make a 1-1 copy of Maligos after you summoned it but that probably wouldn't last for too long and that wouldn't work great and that's a battle cry instead of a death rattle 
Um, you could use this quest, which we won't see, I imagine, any new quest for this expansion. Um, is this a quest card? Or is this just a spell card? Hmm. Pretty sure this is a quest card, but I don't even remember what they look like. Uh, summon a 1 1 copy of each minion in your deck. If you played this on the ninth turn and it got Maligos on your field, that would be fine, but then it would just be one Maligos on your field. It still wouldn't really work that well. So, yeah. The, the idea of playing a Maligos deck on Hunter is not something that seems viable. Otherwise, I would say that the Hunter expansion is doing pretty good. Spell Hunter and Hunter has been a top tier meta deck anyway, so it's performed very well in ranked play. It doesn't feel like Hearthstone and Activision Blizzard cares to really change that. I would have thought, frankly, if I was in charge, I would have had a lot of the Hunter decks and the Druid decks be nerfed quite a bit and get things like the spell the mage deck up get warlock deck up uh get shaman deck up uh, get some of the ones that don't win that often to be overpowered for a little bit and and have it so that every time there's a new expansion there's a new top tier hero class to play so at least the people who are playing via instructions online would have to change who they're playing as instead of it's been i think about a year where you could play as a druid or a hunter and do perfectly well without ever playing as any of the hero classes that just doesn't seem like that's uh, enough change anyways that's the new cards for the expansion the new hunter cards uh, that's going to be it for this recording. As always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe, comment, and watch every second of my videos. If you want a friend to follow me on any social media sites, there's a bunch of links down below in the description box. And don't forget to click that notification bell. Also, if you want to support me even further, there's a link down below to Patreon. Or you can friend me on Steam and gift me a game off my wishlist. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.